Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Welcome. You get fairy dust and I get fairy dust and this sweet little lamb gets fairy dust. Amelie's sitting right here. All oh, you got to see her. Cute. Okay. Welcome to the Reverend Grief Guide. All right. I am a grief counselor and I study grief. I have gotten a lot of education on it. I have worked at a hospice and I have, um, in the entire time I've had my private practice, which I think is 13 years now, something like that, a little bit more maybe, um, I've always had a uh, part of my practice around 25% as grieving clients. And so I'm an expert. And I have always had a fantasy of writing a book. Uh, I've tried it many, many times um, called The Irreverent Grief Guide. Um, but I thought a way in for now so I can share my knowledge and hopefully provide some solace, some peace, some understanding about the grief process. Um, and I think it might be helpful to some people. I found that some of my articles on grief were the most popular on my website. And so I know that um, it's a very difficult thing. And you already know this, but society, we don't really handle death that well. Um, no, no thanks. And when you grieve, it is like being in another world, especially at first. I can remember just walking around feeling just abject loneliness, like feeling like the world wasn't real. Like I, I can remember one time after grieving, standing in a Walmart, and I, I don't know why I remember that almost as much as I remember some of the things around the death that I was experiencing at that time. And I was like, how? How are these people walking around in this store? How are those cashiers just talking and laughing? Like, how is this happening? I, it's, you're in another world, and that's because your brain is doing some major, major, major work, major changing, major adjusting, major adapting, major suffering. Like you are suffering, grief is suffering. And I wanna make a place in the world where we start to understand that grief is, when, we, when we're grieving, we're kind of fucked for a little while. <laughs> if you have turned this off already, I do not blame you. Um, if you're still listening to this, you're still here because it's really important for me to dispense this information from my truth and I'm an irreverent advanced bitch <laughs> so and I am a dark dark humor bitch like I'm a like it's got to be dark <laughs> for me to laugh at it and I think that we have that survivors of uh, childhood trauma have that in common um, and so there's a lot of shit out there about grief for everybody else but there's no place for us, for the dark ones, for the traumatized ones. And that's what the irreverent grief guide is. And I'm so glad you're, I'm so fucking glad you're here. And I'm so excited to share all my fucking knowledge with you. And um, I have, you know, what I have learned is my um, best way of uh, talking about any topic, any psychological topic any personal growth topic, P.S., if you're actively grieving, you're actively growing. Um, we don't want to grow when we're grieving, but we are growing. Uh, is when I get, have a question or when I interact with a thought um, because the subject is so vast. So what I thought I would do is start with a book. So... I have this book. You don't have to get this book. I have not even read it yet. When I was um, dreaming and scheming about writing my book, The Irreverent Grief Guide, I, d I just bought a lot of books on grief, uh, the current books, and it's so great. There's so many out there. And when we come across one that, that I really love, I will, of course, tell you. 
um, and recommend it for sure. I'm not not recommending this book, I just haven't read it yet. But I thought this might be a good one to start with to just let all the information unfold naturally because if this is a grief day by day book, um, this is actually, it's done by weeks, 50, 52 weeks. So um, it'll be a great way to introduce a topic introduce their commentary her commentary Jan Warner pretty sure that's a female uh, yes her um, and uh, we'll go from there but I want to say welcome and also welcome to the club because that's kind of what it is there's people who know what life is like and then there's people who know what life is like behind the curtain and behind the curtain bad things happen in life. Behind the curtain, scary things happen in life. Behind the curtain, we experience incredible pain, incredible loss. And if you're watching this and you haven't experienced a, a death, but somehow what I'm saying is you keep watching, it keeps resonating, I would like to say to you, trust that, because I found out one of the reasons I was so determined, because I went to graduate school to become a grief counselor. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to work at hospice. I, that is all I wanted. I mean, maybe behind that there was dreams about, you know, working with women and, um, you know, having a private practice. You know, of course you always dream that, but my, my main focus through the whole, um, my whole master's was I want to be a grief counselor. And, um, and so any time, so if I was in multicultural counseling, so we have a class like that. If I was in multicultural counseling, I would write a paper on multicultural grief. When I was in career counseling, it was, um, f a focus on, um, you know, I threw grief in there. And anyway, I, I threw grief in any paper, any topic I could, childhood grief, you know, when we were studying um, adolescent psychology and stuff like that. So that was my focus. That was my drive. And later I found out, um, this wonderful, wonderful theory, which I absolutely subscribe to. And it is a magical theory, which is we choose a career. Our career is our antidote to our childhood pain. And so <laughs> I remember one therapy session I had, I mean, I was bawling and I'm like, I <laughs> why I'm a grief counselor <laughs> because I'm grieving my childhood <laughs> and scene. Um, so if you're watching this and you're, you haven't experienced a death, but grief is fucking resonating for you. That's why you're watching it because you're post-traumatic, uh, trauma, your, your, uh, childhood trauma. You're watching it cause you've been through some shit. You're, you're watching it and you've got some grieving to do and that's fine. Um, it doesn't mean that, okay, turn it off and go grieve. No, no, no. You're going to get your grieving in with me here. Um, so I just wanted to give you permission. It's okay to be here even if you haven't experienced a death or you're not grieving right now. And the other thing, if this is resonating and you like the videos um, from the Reverend Grief Guide, then you will, um, you will be um, more uh, armed when you are faced with death and grief and you will be grieving. I mean, we all have to do it. It's just part of life. I remember um, sometime, you know, most of my shit comes from my, my education, my self-help books, and um, my, my, my own therapy, but every now and again, I have, I have a great partner. My husband is an amazing person, and uh, he went, we had a death of an animal, so his cat died, and he's a cat, 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 cat person from early, early childhood, so this is really, was devastating, and I just remember watching him grieve. I was sad, but it wasn't my cat, so, um, you know, it was a cat he brought into the marriage, and and I liked it fine, but I wasn't devastated by the loss, and he just, he, I just saw him sit on the edge of the bed, he was so sad. And P.S., if you're watching this because you have someone in your life that is grieving, you are amazing. You might be codependent, so don't stop watching the codependent videos. <laughs> but 
if you're legitimately, illegitimately or legitimately, we do our best because we're, we're doing the, the amazing work if we're um, loving somebody who's grieving. But um, this will also help you be comfortable talking about death, talking about loss and being around somebody who is grieving. So there's that. So um, this, and, and it's hard to watch somebody grieving. It's hard to watch somebody be in pain. And that's why people lose friends during a time like this because People are very uncomfortable around being around someone with pain and even a codependent. If you had a codependent friend and you were grieving, the codependent might not be able to hang around you in your pain because they can't fix it. So it is a time, it's a, it's a tough time because lots of things change, including some of our lifelong friends because they don't know how to be there when the shit is hitting the fan. Back to the story. So he's sitting on the edge of the bed, so fucking sad. And I just hear him say, I hate this part. And I was like, oh my God, that is the most genius thing. Like, I hate this part. This is part, this is part grief and pain and loss and ache around a loss is part of the contract. It's part of our relationships. When we're in relationship with each other, we are agreeing to hurt if we have to lose it. And they're agreeing to hurt if they have to lose us. Grief is part of all of our lives. And I am gonna grieve irrever irreverently and I am give myself full fucking permission to grieve. And so welcome to the Irreverent Grief Guide. Welcome and I honor you, uh, a person in, this is, this is, we need a, a new word for namaste, but this is a person who acknowledges the pain within her saying, I acknowledge the pain within you. Okay. I hope that was helpful. Feel free to ask me any questions. I will be making grief videos once a week. Love you for now, bye.